All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Imperator Rome here on the Lord Mass channel. It's Imperator Rome Invictus to be exact, which the Sogdian series continues as Sogdia continues to grow large and larger than ever. In fact, that <laughs> that is large as it is now, but however, <laughs> it's like it may look, you know, quite like a formidable force on the outside, even <laughs> compared to the Morians, but however, we do have a lower than, you know, population uh, compared to someone like that, that's, that's a much numerous population, which obviously you know how the Indians are, but currently the Morians are on a decline, declining in fact that new independent entities have sprung up in the Indus Valley region, and as well as up to the areas of southern Bactriana. So it's these regions of, um, what do you call it, um, it's like this is Gandhara, this is Bactriana, and this is, ah, Maru, that's what's called, part of Maru. Yes, um, and a bit of a Gidrosia, that, um, that I think I kind of have a possible new major goal now. Although, it's also noticeable that we've not completed this mission, but however, I kind of want to do one more, and that is this one. It doesn't say the clear war on Morian one, but rather whoever is the owner of that entity there, of Kapisa, because that province with the new, uh, the next goal is to take this very valuable city of Texas. All the reason for that is, is this is where the center of learning is. For anyone who is the owner of it, there's research points, monthly military experience, and monthly statesmanship. Which would make it the second great wonder that we own. Compare that to this one, which Sogdia as a whole will have, uh, as we know now, unintegrated culture happiness up, while maximum research efficiency up. Now, getting that also helps with the research points, which in fact it says it affects Capiz. So, these bonuses here doesn't affect the bonds, but the country as a whole. Now, we know we've always been falling behind on research due to the lack of population numbers and not enough nobles or citizens and the like. Well, it's starting to come around better than, uh, than before. Especially with the integrated peoples. That we've ditched a minority and and integrated the one that's becoming a visible minority. Yeah. Alexandra, look at that again. That's for the province. Okay. Integrated culture happiness. It actually does not say. It affects Bactrians. Ah. Okay. Must have. It must be at least in the pops. We started a ways of war using a cultural decision. Cultural decision. Let me see that. Study Greek ways of war. Ah, there you go. So, okay. We we'll need a great culture to see in the website. Hellenistic culture group does not have embraced foreign military, has the military experience up to 50, which is almost there, in fact. And if you do that, you spend a set military experience while dropping stability and a political influence. And, uh, okay, so that's how you unlock it. Right. I understand now. And of course, there's these little decisions, but that's just to make it to the loyalty. And why on earth would you want to do that one? Create an honor guard is always a good option. 
because it doesn't affect stability. Like say, if you need someone that has a good martial skill to lead our armies, if none of our men like that, we can always bring an honor guard. Just need a Macedonian to be with us. And of course you can always find talent. There is so much yet to learn and a new character appears in Sogdia. Hmm. Interesting. That's what they mean by that. We got so many damn slaves that, uh, you know, that can cause trouble in the future. In fact, there are more slaves than ever before. I mean, yeah, it's good and every and all, but um, you know, you need certain things to promote the populations. Like, say, building academies, just to up the pop promotion speed. I mean, there's room for that. But I already got my money saving in mind. And also, in the meantime, what are we going to do with uh, Kashmir, which is the neighboring entity? And Aparava which are disloyal to the Morians as they know that the Morian is collapsing and the overlord is unfit because it's still a child is a client state and I recently thought well we gotta get them off of you know being out of them demand subject transfer if their opinions too low against us and for good reason But obviously we're quite a uh, distance away. But I do not wish to harm the Parava. Them on the other hand. Demand travel vessels. Does not use diplomatic sub but cannot be integrated diplomatically. Are not automatically called to the Overlord's Wars. Okay. Seems like a good idea. You used to have a sizable border, but you've gone in decline as of late. Allied with Cambodia. Ah, yes. Need to integrate that, because that's a client state. Let me send you a gift. It don't cost much. We'll talk again in a month. While our manpower recovers in big time. While we're fabricating a claim of what's left of North Town Basin. Start integration. This mountain pass will be ours. Little defenseless Pamir. We'd love to integrate you as well. You're a Sakan. That means not Bactrian culture. Here we go again. That one place. Holdings income, so I get a little money out of this. A bunch of us increases the bit of that finesse skill. Grain distribution. I become master of trade. I just remembered something. Sogdian Emporium. Yes, that costs political influence, and there's some money in that. I forgot about this. Don't forget who you are. You are a Sogdian. As a reminder, the Sogdian importers are a special type of marketplace that can only be built with this interaction. 
and it'll be taken every 10 years. Now I need a place of a good tax income, or goods produced, or um, we'll just pay attention to the tax income. If you see double digits, pay special attention to that. I see 11, 41, that's Samarkand. Alexandria Scotza, that's 30. Where's Samarkand? There you are. Put it here. So the population output is minus 100, minus 100% for next year. Because we're working on something here. And in the meanwhile, we're building a aqueduct here. Which is finished now. That jumped up big time. Okay, building a Sogd Emporium, and this is what the Sogd Emporium gives you. You see that there? That gives you local tax plus 30% and plus 3 local based trade routes. So therefore we can import more things that we we may need. Like step horses. Citizens happy, well we need something for nobles. What's something that we do not have that would be Marble. Unfortunately, it's gonna come from them. And surplus that's reduced tyranny. Okay. What about for slaves? Slaves are an unhappy bunch and they're hard to please. Get us more cloth from Ganhara. Of course, because we have them as a vassal now. And they'll give us whatever trade goods as, as we like. And they won't object to it. See? Benefits us more than them. And of course, grain. From what's left of Moria before it collapses all the way. See, that's what Sogdam Farm is for. It's winter, that's why the food modifier is going down. Don't worry about that. A Sogdam Farm can only be built every 10 years. Does this also mean, uh... Another thing I'm curious about. No, Samarkand isn't added there. Come on, get out of this screen. There you go. Because the game won't run while you're on that screen. Don't worry about them. Although I may have to start worrying about them in the future when we built that city there. And that's something we're going to be saving up our money now. <laughs> Kashmir could have expanded more, but these entities are in the way. Selling old schools. Rash, uh, there is a delicate matter to require personal attention. We heard reports that Artaxerxes, your brother, brother Artaxerxes, um, he's been threatening to kill Sadasa over a real estate. It seems they both want the same property in Samarkand, and neither is backing down. The war words continue to escalate over the last few weeks, and just last night, Sadasa was attacked outside of his home and was badly beaten, ultimately losing an eye. Well, normally we wouldn't trouble you with such things. Your blood relation with Artaxerxes complicates the issue. And Starcy has been telling everyone that you sent your henchmen over there to teach him a lesson, and people start to listen.
friend of rival of ruler. Well, my goodness, he lost an eye. He did indeed. But he is governor of Scythia. I'd rather have him on our side. So I'll say I'll send him a gift from the treasury and our, and our profuse apologies. Brother won't like that. See? They killed themselves out there. No need to worry about that. In position. Kill the army for a while. Yeah, yeah, I know, everybody wants to trade, yeah. So it is a very good idea to build a Songbian Emporium here. And if I was to build another one, I would put that over there. Knowing this city is just as important. Hang on here. that there. Shortage is eased. Oh, we'll ease those shortages, all right. Give them some grain. Give them all kinds of food. something we're trying to do. Need something for the citizens. Not quite up there yet, but it'll do. So as much as I would like to build mountain fortresses there, but I'm not that terribly worried now. Knowing that the gateway to the subcontinent is open to us, and we could take advantage of that situation whenever we need to. We're still sticking with what we built this shrine for us. I guess there's only one logical choice when we built that holy site, it's gonna be for the deity of war. Love to get you on our side, but I'll see what I can do to improve relations with you. And same for you. Yeah, it just again, it's a telltale sign that we're trying to spread the influence into the uh, into the parts of the subcontinent. In preparation that Sogdia will enter into India to go to Taxila and get it under our control. And therefore, research up. Because that's what we need. Exactly what this country needs. Jade of Yutian, also known as Havamna, or Kotan, that's also noted there. Which, of course, we kind of neglected to have a look at Kotan. There we go. We'll deal with that in a moment. Yeah, 
they made quite a bit of improvements. Um, but unfortunately, they don't have anything that would be considered desirable in our eyes. So it's kind of hard to convince people to go over there unless I tell them to migrate here. But I could. I'll give him something for the Freeman. Base metals will do. Get him off of Gunhara. This is well. Okay, son. You ready for your first war? This will be an easy one. Because <laughs> all you need to do is just defeat those forces from there. Take those two fortresses down. Kutcher will take care of this matter. And then, boom. It's all over. And we'll bring down all these fortresses. Because there's no reason to have them anymore. Okay. Actually, one second. I mean, I'd like to get this, but there's some other things I'm also particularly interested in. Just something that would be very beneficial. This one. Needs one of. Get that. You lose the aggressive expansion immediately and diplomatic relations up just to make things easier. To negate the penalties that we have as Sogdians. Remember that. But anyways, let's go for it. You're not going to get much uh, aggressive expansion of eighth. Off you pop. If you see any levies, defeat them. A one eyed general. That'll get you up a little. <laughs> Shouldn't take too long. So if it's Imperial Challenge against Capissa, then what do we do with Kashmir? Probably use aggressive expansion by uh, fabricating a claim on them. Because their name... No, 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 not like that. This one, you dummy. Gunhara controls that bit too, but don't get mad. And we'll get it all down once that innovation comes. Oh no, they're going back to them. But since Kalinga is losing the war, that means it's definitely going to fall back to more in control, but for who knows how long until it continues to collapse itself from whatever direction. You got it. A new Sogdian Emporium. We have received word from our chief builders that a new Sogdian Emporium has been completed. Even now, mere days after the construction has finished, Hundreds of citizens have flocked to the new district, where the chaotic, where chaotic sights and smells of the market, exotic spices, made through the crowded streets of tiny shops selling grilled meat and portage, pottage, excuse me. Um, loud voices arguing over prices next to booths overflowing with stacks of 
of embroidered textiles and fine silk. The bleeding of livestock, birds in cages have all overwhelmed all senses. Samarkand is a Sogdian Emporium, which will further boost the economy here. And soon, this will be the, the area for the holy site that we will place, adding even more local tax, and as well as the migration attraction. I wish I could do that for Alexandria Scata, but none of them, we don't have any of the ones that would be represented. But if I was to pick one, but obviously, they are all taken, unfortunately, as far as holy sites is concerned. I'd like to replace them. I mean, we've got to get rid of that national tribes and happiness because there are hardly any tribesmen anymore. Epidari. So, I would either pick Artemis. Oh, we already got the Freeman happiness through that. Yeah, Artemis would be the one. And if that holy site were to be destroyed over there, I would love to build one there. Right here. I just need a little more money, that's all. Political influence, no problem. Build two cities, no problem. I'm looking to expand the population of Sogdan as a whole. And soon we're going to go down to the regions, which are not, not too populous, but until you get further down into India, where there are far more populations there that awaits us. In fact, why do I get the impression that this playthrough is going to turn into a uh, an Indo-Sogdian Empire? <laughs> Just like the Egypto-Sogdians you did in Crusader Kings 3. A... Indo-Sogdian Empire. If I was, you know, joking even more, like one would think I would even adopt Buddhism just to point that, uh, just to drive that point home. Like the Indo-Greek Kingdom, historically. Okay. Civil War. Well, they're gonna help each other out, so it matters a little. Unless they break down too. And them to what the hell's going on over there? Are there really that many disloyal characters? Except for uh, Panchanda. Put that down. Nobody's after you. What's going on with Khwarezmia over there? Obviously, it's a very, uh, it's a very foreign land. With heptotic faith being more common, but these ritualistics that's been making their way there, well, we can change that. Parthia has took Khwarezmia. It's no more. You're all alone. Planning my demise. Well, I like to see you try. You may own the sea, but one day this will be our land too, even though not many people live there. Fourteen. Fourteen territories left of the Slugan Empire. One, two, three. Where are the others? Oh, over there. 
they have to go overland. Cappadocia isn't with them. They just had their own civil war. So this is their new capital. Ever since the old one fell. Now it's going to take some convincing for those who wish to work for the... Well, I mean, let me see access. Nobody's giving them access. I guess it's never ending. Sparsely populated. Unremarkable. Except this area here. That's rather attractive if we were to expand westward. But I'm far more invested in... Uh, what are you doing down here? Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot this issue. Minor character. Just about to reach it. So, have you gotten over? I mean, you are intelligent. You know how to do a lot of research. Or the, <laughs> you know, he's my rival, right? Yes, rival the ruler. Hey, you used to be the tutor. I'll give you this job. Multiplied by behind of time. I mean, we're all behind the time. That's the reason why we got to go to Taxilla one day. Our ongoing attempts to woo the highly skilled statesman shall is a counter to age. Being a true man of the people, he decided best in a crazy and beautiful monument to please the Sogdian people. To complete this mammoth task requires a large number of able bodied souls if we provide such assistance. We're sure to be in our debt. No, I'll give you money instead. Next time, perhaps. We can colonize. Ashpara Nari. Ashpara Nari. Oh, yes! I forgot there's this one other mission that we were never be able to finish. Fortress and I. This one! <laughs> Ask any of the merchants that traveled through the Forgotten Valley, and you will hear the same thing. The mountain pass at Nari is the gateway to the entire region. Whoever controls the pass will be able to keep a close eye on the trade routes. Lot plus 30 local fort defense. So basically, at an unlikely event that we get a barbarian invasion from who knows where, maybe the steps at the most unlikely. We've got to protect our flank, so colonize that. Cost you ten. It's gonna cost you a lot of money, but you gotta have a fortress first. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Move up. So as a reminder, when you reach the civic level 4, that gives you the ability that your army can start building roads. Which is something we ought to invest in in the future. Road building. 
like build a road from Kashgar to Alexandria Skata to Samarkand to Bactra and then towards India. War's over, man. Just surrender. Aggressive expansion. Mind you, the second is our integrated culture. So let's be nice, alright? Something I've been wanting to do for some time because I'm a crazy man. Deified ruler. Deified rulers are ordinary rulers lifted up to Godward. They can be worshipped by a population and will be able to place in the war pantheon. A ruler will have the same bonus as infusion of war and offer an additional benefit when your omen is invoked. But if this deity is not part of your pantheon for too long, it will be forgotten by your people. Well, before we do that, um, there are those Hellenics without a holy site, some of them, like Ares and Ares, but I'd rather keep the one that's got discipline. And then Would it be honorable if my father, Samtish, who back in his youth was driven away by Alexander during his conquest of Sogdia, and then in his late life retook Samarkand, in which he invested heavily in Samarkand before I took over? I think it's only right, although I have flaws myself, despite the fact that I am a pious person. But a real pious person shouldn't name himself into godhood, elevate myself into godhood, but my father, he was a visionary, he was wise, and he was humble, and a veteran warrior, and this fits, this fits, so, to elevate my father to, to godhood, so, it'll cost you 200 political influence, for all this. We've been saving that up for a long time. But you know, the building of cities can wait because remember that military tradition or one of those other ideas. So, yes, my father Samtish is a god. Our descendants shall remember the deeds of Samtish. Strength of this life carries over into the afterlife. Samtish perfectly embodies our nation in flesh as in spirit. Now, this is going to cost you even more political influence, not to mention all the money. We we do not know if Samtish was born in Samarkand. For again, he was a child, and it was driven out as you, and now we're back here. Samarkand is to be a great city one day. So, de dedicating a holy site improves the associated deities modified by 25%. Additionally, in this territory, this city here of Samarkand will have local tax up, local city building slots up, and this will encourage those who want to migrate here come here even more. So this veneration of Samtish inspires new settlers to migrate our capital. There's two more. So Ogden Freeman will come here. So there you have it. Now we have a temple dedicated here. And in addition... So yes, this, uh, this planet and the National Freeman have an 
did go up with it. And you know two treasures? Local population growth will help. So yes, yeah, sacred Zoroastrian shrine dedicated to goddess on Hita. Associated with fertility, healing, and wisdom. Even though it's a Zoroastrian artifact, not ritualistic, but we cannot deny it. Put that here. And this subtle one, the statue of Bicephus, for more local manpower. Very happy with this. Nearly spent all the money. You were going to save your money for cities. But now it's going to take a long time to get it all back up. Remember, it's 200 to build a city. Now, how much is political influence? 50, I believe? 50. Yeah. Now, march down towards Bactra. Because we want you to prepare for future wars against Kashmir and all the other entities. And since we have taken new territory, now it's all about defending liberty here. No matter our true cause, proclaiming those who are weaker than ourselves are incapable of defending themselves, and therefore in need of, of, of benevolent guidance, we garner a claim on the international stage. So this will lose a lot of aggressive expansion here. So this will make some people a little more happier when it comes to improving relations. So they don't have to look at us more negatively in such a way. But unfortunately, it looks like they're going to be staying with the Morians. Unless they decline even more. Koshala. Uh oh. Is Koshala free? There's a new nation now. Or they just simply stopped trading with us. Truce with Trigata. Uh, I don't know if this was recent. Trigata does exist. Oh, never mind. They came from there. They came down from the mountains and took that over. But they are a free country. A little far away, if we want to make it a travel vassal. But give it a try. I'm just willing to improve relations with anybody that cares. And we need the grain. Uh, get it off of the vault. She's tolerant. Too bad I can't change laws right now. Because this would be very useful right now. Actually, you can now, but I need a little more leftover. Helping the diplomatic relations even more um, would definitely help me. Got it. Stability is very high. Yeah, sorry about that.
Quasi veins are not as numerous as seconds. Ah, oh, come on. Uh oh. Border changes. Moria has been split. Now the Shunga Empire is born. Imperial challenge. Mahanadin of Oshala family has now challenged Moria. Still young, depressed, lazy. Definitely has no quality. Are you willing to abandon your overlord? Should the Morians be defeated? So the Shunga, obviously a major power. Eh. Okay, we don't have to worry about Morian interference anymore. But now there's a revolt, two revolts in fact. So now they're beating each other up. I would most definitely take advantage of that situation right now and go to Kashmir once once that claim is fabricated. But you gotta wait for the army to get to that. So I could say is. Oh, there goes the green. Can't believe I spent nearly all my money and political influence to raise my father into godhood and made a holy site of the temple of Samtish here in our capital which is also the home of the Songdian Emporium here but we do have room for another building but should build this Kashmir. Remember, there's a bit of Kashmir over there. If you want to take its capital, it's over there. But fortunately, it's next door to Gandhara. Denizens of the territory of Alexandria Ocho has been feuding with their neighbors in Oskabara. As a result, an impressive fortified wall has been erected there. Not doing the efforts of their rival. Way to go. Even though there's no room for a fortress, but thanks for the free manpower. So we have to take this objective. Where is the provincial capital? In order to take this. All the way back there. So after we have that dealt with, we can go through Gandhar and take Kapista in an imperial challenge. It's getting momentum. There is no fortress attack still, so we expect that to fall soon. But as for you, my friend. One day, you will join Sogdia, a part of us. And for any smaller entities, you may join us as well. Oh, civil war is finally over. Seleucid Empire is no more. 
now it's just plain old Persian Empire led by Pisanias which he wasn't the original leader of the rebellion but he still got Persis as the satrap although not loyal yet Obviously, we can't get Amma over there. We can't get her on our side. They're probably going to go back to them soon enough. There's also a... This is a local rebellion. Which is, uh... We could say Babylonian rebellion, just by saying that by nationality alone. Polis, they're dealing with that too. <sighs> Two thousand. How many times did they kill each other over and over while we clipped a bit of this and Parthia taking bits of that? But I still think it's not a good idea to take on Persian Empire now based on what they've gone through and a number of populations in relative to ours. So that's why I think it's ideal to go down this way as a safer option. And not worried about the Shungas yet. Almost a major power, but if they get their act together, they might be. Evenly matched between Moria and Shunga. So yes, civil war in Persian Empire is finally come to an end. But the treasonous forces of Pisanias utterly crushing their loyalist armies, led by Antiochus Lugin and his rebellious conspirators, were arrived being informed that the turning point of the war was during the siege of uh, Palo uh, Palariacta, where where loyalist force attempted to rout the rebel army, but were outmaneuvered by the superb tactics of Pisanias. The outcome of war is largely irrelevant to us. Oh, it is to me, actually. As we do not consider Persian Empire as either a friend or an enemy, but we ought to be careful now, now that our nation's tracked on, on track to recovery. They'll recover fast in manpower. But wait for one month to register to see how this goes. Hey, um, I know we're quite far apart border-wise, the border distance between us is great, but you seem, uh, friendly to us, so how would you like if, um, you like to ditch them and try to get to us somehow? Highly unlikely, but it would be nice. Gedrosia is free. Because it's dealing with a revolt of... Oh, they're taking advantage of that situation. That's what they're doing. But, however... Keep in mind, they're Iranians, not Bactrians. They're different. small so once again continue with this charm offensive tribal vassals will do where's Chitty now what where's Chitty 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 it's East Chitty where's West Chitty Ongoing war. Imperial challenge. Ah, okay, I understand. Get it from... 
I don't suppose Persian Empire has any claims on Castle to warn us, do they? No, it says nothing about the salt deal. Nothing on us. They don't hold a grudge against us. know who controls what in the meantime. That was our core philosopher. Oh, I'll give it to him. Just to stick it up. Stick it up with my rival. Depopulated. Nobody controls that. Oh. Observing the master. Lately, Artaxerxes, my son Artaxerxes, has been pestering us almost daily with simple requests. One that that cannot ignore much longer. What Artaxerxes has asked is simple enough, if a little embarrassing. All he wants is a chance to observe Rash in the next council meeting. Being somewhat inexperienced in political matters, Artaxerxes would like to watch the Master at work, so to speak, in hopes of learning how to deal with advisors. You can sit behind me, but keep quiet and don't appear too eager. Selfish man. That's... These are negative traits. Cruel, selfish. What kind of ruler is he gonna be? need a friendship. Thank you. Don't forget to befriend other rulers, but you need to raise your money for this. Under attack. Nakasa, we've got to get you on our side. But unfortunately, this is about as much Relations we can improve now, but they won't join us because of differences. Uh, it's just a base value. So that will not do unless you want to ally with them, which would be nice as always. As, no, oh, one sec. Festival with Taikuri. As we prepare another festival here in Samarkand, we have heard rumors of a similar festival over in Taipuria, as two nations get along with one another. This could be a chance for us to come together and celebrate a festival together, and get to know each other a bit better. No, it's always been a festival for just our people. AD Stability! Okay, let's see. Now that we've integrated you, so now which one of you talented folks is going to come in? Because these are all old people. Well, that depends on your statesmanship skills and your health. Yeah, I don't know about any of you. So I'll take a... No, no, what's that? Offer him refuge, and the rest can leave. I'll disappear in obscurity. Okay, now. We were able to improve relations here as much as we could, but now, let's have an alliance together.
and they are willing to become tribal vassals. Excellent. Talk to you in a month. So, yeah, now we're expanding our zone of influence into the subcontinent and Himalaya as well as tribal vassals. Get in here. See, this is what it'll do. A tribal vassal is a tribal subject of a civilized nation who gives a portion of their monthly manpower and come to the overlord in exchange for protection and bonuses to civilization. Tribal vassals do not use the diplomatic sub, but cannot be integrated diplomatically and may cancel the relationship. Tribal vassals are not automatically called into the overlord's wars. The overlord also receives a bonus of tribal population happiness. So we will protect you if you are ever attacked. And plus, it's a settled tribe, so at any time they could become a republic or a monarchy. And in turn, it's going to turn into a client state. And then uh, we may possibly integrate them if we really establish ourselves here in the subcontinent like this. So we got that in our... Now, Cambodia, obviously, much easier to convince. Because that's another tribal vassal to our name. Curse is over there. Um, although we can't establish an alliance, but... Subject transfer could also be hard to convince. Looks like Arakosi has got this handled regarding the revolt. No way. stuck together. Rebellious brethren, huh? Eek, what else? Oh, also depopulated. Huh? Yeah, that border this is quite far away. I think it'll be harder to convince, harder to please. I'm kind of hesitant to start another war. Oh, yes. Ooh, that's a bit of a problem. So actually, that can wait. Much like we're waiting on for this to settle down, and then we'll come in and take it all over. Drill. Just drill for a while. And then we're ready to, you know... Unleash the hounds. We can ally with the Persian Empire if we wanted to. I mean, we don't have any, you know, we don't, as we said, we don't hold grudges. Seems uh, I can handle the aggressive expansion very nicely these days. So we should look to other things. Unintegrated culture group happiness, that would be good. But there's other things I also really want. like more import value.
Diplomatic reputation is always good. Because with diplomatic reputation, that means you are more than likely to, you know, it's just another bonus for those improved relations, which is something you've been doing. Okay, I'm willing to sacrifice this just to get to that. And when we get those two next, perhaps we'll finally get to cohorts. But I'm not going to pass the law to raise uh, more legions because that manpower reserve isn't enough to keep up with that. This is why we need to increase the populations of just about anywhere. And that area we just integrated there, unremarkable. In fact, why are there fortifications up there? We don't need these two. You can take one, alright? Bring that down. And we'll get some money back out of this. Oh, in fact, same for all of these things. What the? This can keep... These go down. There we go. There are just some places where you don't need them. Now, look again. Diplomatic reputation plus three. But it's going to be a little hard to please regarding Persis. It's also going to require befriending. Oh, never mind. She's about to die. So, who's to be her successor? We'll talk back in a minute. So, just keep an eye on it. But no doubt our research is doing better than ever. More better if we ever get our hands to Texilla. While the Shunga Morian War rages on. Which Shunga is winning. Why do I get the impression that that all of Moria is going to collapse and only Kamarupa and uh, is that area down there? Uh, Sayadri will be the ones that will be the remnants. Again, I'd love to get my hands on Persis. Because this would be a great buffer against Persian Empire. Increased tariffs. Just improving the economy a little better. Back to being 100% legitimacy, finally. How's my little daughter? She's tolerant. She's got finesse, but Marshall, yeah. And he's slightly underwhelming stats wise. But where she's similar, but she's still got some growing up to do. Now look again. We still got time. There's still plenty of time until, until uh, this is the new ruler. He's healthy, firstborn, submissive, huh? 
improve opinion maximum. Right. Um, he's got no friends, so there's room for that. Which I'll get to him sooner rather than later. We hope. Because you're gonna need a lot of this. I mean, he's willing to jump ship because of common threat. Get cohorts for the discipline. Because mind you, we fight against those Greco Indians, which I we, which we don't know, but we have to assume. The further down we go, you're going to be fighting against war elephants, and they are of no picnic. And of course, I'm still saving my money and political influence for those two cities to be built that I promised myself that I'm going to, and I will. But some of that is going to have to be spent soon to befriend the, uh, the king of Persis. it appears that um, the rebellion is being defeated now. They're getting their act together. But for how long? That's the real question. Still got time. Oh, and also we're about to reach the next level of military experience. Just keep on drilling, boys. Nearly all the territories of the Kapasa revolt is lost. If they need to defeat the army, then the rebellion will be declared over. for such things. It's not even a full hundred years in this playthrough yet. And, and also, since it's... Oh, hang on. Our trade agreement with uh, James Julia has yielded a splendid return on investment. Along the flow of wealth between our two states, the movement of people is accelerating. Our city of Alexandria, Scotta, has been blessed with a wave of fresh migrants. We believe they will stand a better chance of building their lives in Sogdia. Who are we to deny them? Tukarian and Kotanese. We don't need more slaves. You got too many slaves. So, so a noble and a tribesman. Come on in. Anything to add the population further. In fact, it's overpopulated now. We got to do something about that future. But now, here's what we really wanted. Veteran communities. Um, so our veterans teach the younger recruits their experience mixing with the temperament of youth. So that little city of Amu there, migration attraction there and population similarly speak because it's colony now. A military colony will be found in this territory. And also, when active, discipline up again, but now it's slightly reduced cost to found city. Sogdian. The arrival of Sogdian settlers has hardly endeared the local population to us, but the foundation of a colony in this era is without doubt the best way to exert control of it in the long run. Soon even the local Khwazmian inhabitants will see how our city will prosper and surpass any previous settlements that may have had in this area before the land was confiscated. So any of those Sogdian populations that got nothing better to do, 
move to there. So now you got military companies. Take better care of it. Now, it doesn't mean that you can... Well, actually it does. It, instead of 200 gold and 50 political influence, now it costs slightly less. But you ought to be careful because this province is disloyal because the governor is corrupt and a few other things. Well, when we create this city in the future, I want that to be built here because of the port there. And over again, second one in near future, this too, for the Jade. Or alternatively, improve for Vamna, which is kind of hard to get by. Because of a couple of other things. Mainly, well, I don't know. That's probably a far off. I think you're better off find uh, found the city there. And then... We'll go after Taxila. But continue to save up your money and political influence because of Persis here. Now we're gonna have to get him on our side and hopefully try to jump ship. In fact, that chance is becoming a bit likely now. Carthage had a civil war? I didn't know that. Loyalists win, though. Oh, never mind. I haven't looked at the Mediterranean in the longest time. Macedon. Rome nearly has all of Italia. And they have a foothold in Northern Africa. Yes. So they took advantage of the situation of the Civil War with the Carthaginians. Ptolemaic Kingdom is now... The kingdom to watch out for. Because I'm sure they're feeling threatened by them now. Because they're not the most powerful now. And it seems the, uh, the rebellions have succeeded. Forces of the Persian Empire have failed to retake Babylonia and uh, Kassinet. So this is of Arabian culture group, not the, uh, not of that. So they came from the desert. Somehow. And decided to make it known. Some of the old gods are still there. So yeah. Babylon is a free nation, but it is technically ruled by an Arabian. And a Hellenic. Interesting developments. And we do have contact with them, but no way we can... Oh, yes, we can get into contact with Babylon and get an alliance with them. And um, I highly doubt it because of the border distance between them. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're still weighing in the options to keep improving relations, and then I'm going to send them some money soon. Oh, hold on a second. If you do this, Freeman will appear each time you venerate them. Right. Guess we're going to have to do that from now on. Because it brings people in here. It brings people to our city. Another aqueduct here. Have they finished their rebellion? Capissa revolt? Oh, they're still down there. They got a fort, so that's why they're still holding on.
Hey, uh, Abaka, since you are a settled tribe. I don't think an alliance is going to work. It's too far away. Unless you want to befriend him, but I'd rather befriend Persis. Army of the Revolt still persists. Manpower is near at the max. But I would love to get it up more. But obviously I'm just so obsessed with expanding to areas and including eventually Kapisa. And that is still the main reason why am I not hitting the finished mission? Because we got this, but I'm far more interested in that one. Now you got Persian Empire to possibly contend with. Okay, level 4. Now you have the ability to build roads, but you need a lot of money for that. Money and time. Successful sieges by my legions generate a bit of military experience, which is, again, very, very interesting to have. The forced march would be great to have. We're kind of far away right now. But also the army weight modifier would be very good to have. Earthworks buildings. One free province investment. Then eventually get down to them. What do you want more? I mean, you are advancing greatly. But of course, we had supply issues every once in a while. So I think upping the supply limit a bit more would be good for our armies to fight in expeditionary wars. That would be better. So our flourishing army requires a dedicated supply and logistics division to ensure that we always maintain big efficiency. We can put it on planning mode. Needs one of, okay. So loyalty of generals would be good. More supply limit, more army movement speed, quick march for yes. This would do for future reference. Let me send you a gift. It's a lot. Oh, you will now, because of my current strength. Ah, uh, one second. Kashi's missing grain. Get it off of Persian Empire. We're trading partners now. Because the Shungamori revolt continues. Revolt war. What's going on over there? Nothing. I can't believe it. <laughs> They're coming to us. Persis to Sogdia. Wait for it. It must be at least 80. I currently have only 56. Uh, 
avoid sending another gift stack up or it won't. Oh no, it doesn't stack, so. Okay. Let's see too if we could be friends together. And I've gotta do something with you. And I'll ask you soon to join us as a travel vessel. An outspoken critic of Ferrantes has been seeking refuge in our own country for some time. He's a man of no importance. He banished from his own land. He seeks out, spreads vicious rumors of debauchery and corruption about the court. This could be an excellent opportunity to in his good books. This wretch abused our hospitality for far too long. Hey. Um, I was wondering, since you are a satrap, you, you see, limited regarding diplomacy. We can't trade with you, can we? No. I mean, that'd be good to have, right? I know, we're at peace. We'll make a large donation to you. Remember, the magic number is 80. But it's currently 60 now. The Marshal and the Rival. Minor character. Oh, you'll do. Okay, here's more money. Let's be friends, damn it. We're so ready to get you under our fold. Because if that is the case, then that's the biggest diplomatic achievement we've ever achieved. Sometimes childhood forges friendships to last for a long time. Often those friendships transcend the boundaries of family, class, and belief. It would appear that Rosanak seems to be developing a strong bond with Bahunash, the Oxian family. As any parent knows, there isn't really much to stand between them. Interesting. Okay, we're friends now. 87, we got it! So, you will be our satrapy, or client state, depending on which you ask. We got it. You are a satrapy. It doesn't take up relations just for doing that. Welcome. But gotta wait for a month to register to see where your loyalty lies. Despite this great separation of our borders. Demodamas the Explorer. Amidst the raging weather and violent seas, a patchwork ship of exotic craftsmanship has been pulled into the port of Boot. Aboard, a crew hailing from far-flung lands of various gaze upon our modest harbor with poorly disguised wonder. With a brief delay, a lone sailor emerges, speaks in perfect Songdian, espousing his gratitude we now talked about trouble or suspicion. He gives his name as Demodamus of Miletus, an explorer of some experience who was sent forth by his liege to discover more about the world at large. He wriggles us with tales of Scythia and Bactria, well you're looking at it, as well as the mysterious lands Far to the east, he begs to leave. He begs our lead to restock his small fleet with galley slaves in return for a bubble, which he claims was revered as holy by a forgotten people. Yeah, sure. Come on in. 
Oh, bye, come on in, I mean, let him continue on his journey. Hopefully that didn't depopulate too much of boot. Maybe we ought to build a city of boot one day, since that has a sizable population, if it could be managed and tamed. It's with us. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Satrap. And you can join us in... in wars. We will be together one day. <laughs> we will be together. If I ever choose to expand into Ariana, and then we link up together, and then we'll be integrated, and it'll be part of Sogdale. Maybe that'll be the <laughs> future attention, but obviously I'm, that's far-fetched. It's just more of weakening Persian Empire than anything else. After they beat up each other so much. But, uh, we did that. And I'm very happy with that. We're not going to integrate with them. This will be good to have. Good to keep, because they pay us in some gold each month. That's good tribute. Very good tribute. Ah. Uh, what else can we do? I mean, I know this episode was originally supposed to be going to Texova. I mean, we'll get to that. Texova's over there. Um, and Gandhar is useful as a client state. Now, Cambodia. Gotta get you as an ally in. Right here, right now. You are about to become a travel vassal as well, just to continue to expand the zone of influence that we have over on the subcontinent. Give it time. It's just almost there, unless I have to send him a gift. There it is. Good doing business with you. The Satavahana had a civil war, and uh, loyalists win. And it appears that the Shunga have advanced and have taken over the metropolis of Patiputra. So this will definitely hurt the Mauryan cause, which they may have a possibility of another civil war. And the sugar may also have its own civil war as well. North India has become a place of instability. One day, you're gonna come to here. Although you needed to get it up to 80, I believe in order to have a successful subject transfer, but we'll keep an eye on it. In fact... Something to look at every once in a while, right? Sooner or later, we're going to have to start expanding to there. Do that little Imperial Challenge and get the whole damn thing. And Kashmir is basically, uh, you know. It seems... I guess it's going to have to take not just our army, but our levies as well to defeat the combined armies. In order to have the road towards Taksuva. Center of learning. Don't forget that Gandhara is with you on this issue as well. So, I think I would say right now we're going to end the episode on this note. So, in the next episode, um, we're, we're just hoping that we're going to be itching closer and closer and closer to 80 population, which probably take a few more decades. And same for Alexandria Scott. 
that this too needs to be a metropolis. We want to improve our economy and manpower and all that. But soon we will be entering into the Indian subcontinent as we have already have spread the zone of influence into there. As I have many subjects now that gives us more manpower and as well as some tribute. Actually, that's not far off. What if you were to become a client state too? Now, that's another th question. Can we get Aracosia on our side too? Just to continue on this charm offensive. And uh, Gidrosa, we'll have to worry about that later. <laughs> Since it's next door to Persis. Which Persis isn't gonna go anywhere now with us so we hope you people have enjoyed this episode of more about diplomacy than anything else <laughs> and maybe we'll get little Pamir with us too you're an autocratic monarchy so that means client state second Dahayan rebellion So now the Persian Empire looks more vulnerable than ever. That's why they even asked for alliance due to common threats. But they still have a wide population. Because they still got all this. Whereas we will expand to there, which has a large population. Not to mention rich. Potentially rich. As well. So we'll see you in the next episode, but until then, so long for now.